In this video, I will tell you about the mortgage renewals that are coming for many people in 2024 and what you can do as an individual or a family if you're faced with renewing your mortgage this year. If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Vlad. I'm a realtor with the Purple Tree Real Estate Group. And on this channel, we are absolutely dedicated to providing you with the most accurate and latest information on what's happening in the real estate market while helping you build your wealth at the same time, brick by brick, all the way from the blueprint and to the completed house. Oh, the time of New Year resolutions and good wishes. I'm recording this video around January 15th, and this is around the time when a lot of people are falling off of the bandwagon of what they've decided to do for the year. They run with new things for the first couple of weeks of the year, and then that's it. Around January 15th, they're done. But the good wishes that we're wishing upon ourselves and upon other people are still there. And among other things, we often wish that other people are prosperous and we're prosperous ourselves as well. Will the real estate market listen in 2024? As it stands right now, the Canadian economy is dangerously concentrated around the housing market. And I want to cover this a bit later in the video, but in the meantime, let's dive directly into our main topic. Let's talk about this article on betterdwelling.com uh, with the title of Bank of Canada warns mortgage payments will soar, but still affordable. So let's talk about this a little bit. With the mortgage stress test, and that's the feeling of the Bank of Canada, the payments should still be affordable to the populace because when they were qualifying for the mortgage, there is this buffer of approximately 2%. Well, you know, if we take everything that the Bank of Canada is telling us as a gospel, then yes, it will absolutely be affordable for people, but the reality might actually differ from what we're hearing from the official sources. Let's go through some stats that I think are quite interesting and are related directly to this topic. 80% of the households will see their mortgage payments rise over the course of 24 and 25. Obviously, we're talking about homeowners with fixed mortgages. So further, the home ownership rate in Canada is at 66.5%, and that's from the latest census. And it's the lowest since 2002. While baby boomers are the biggest homeowner age group, accounting for more than 40% of all homeowners in Canada, and approximately 35.5% of Canadian homeowners have a mortgage in 23. Canadian population is around 39 million, so there's definitely big population growth in the past few years. And in 24, it's estimated that approximately 251 billion in mortgages in Canada will come up for renewal, with about half of those renewing holding fixed mortgages, with the bulk of those being a five-year fixed. Okay, now let's take a typical mortgage of $800,000 on a million-dollar property. Monthly payments for that mortgage, if somebody got into a mortgage commitment with a bank at 2.5%, which is absolutely reasonable from a few years back. So the monthly payments at 2.5% on that sort of a mortgage would be at $3,156. And at 5% after the renewal, they will be at $4,270. The delta, the difference between the two is more than $1,000. And if you're in a household that's making $100,000 per year in gross income, you would typically be taking home around $6,300. So in this case, the remaining income after you pay for shelter costs was approximately $3,000 before the renewal and will all of a sudden be $2,000 after the renewal. So departing from our back of the napkin calculations and broadening it from this specific case to mortgage-related increases across the board, the median mortgage payment is going to rise for people by approximately 44% over the years. So those that are renewing will be looking at an increased mortgage payments of approximately 44%. So basically, people that are faced with the mortgage renewal this year have a few options. One of the options is to go and talk to your boss and see if that'd be amenable to increasing a salary by 44%. Let's see how that conversation is going to go. Another option, and this is a real one, you can rent out a part of your house to a tenant and thus supplement your monthly cash flow, your monthly income with the rental income from somebody living within the confines of your property. Another option would be to put your property up for sale. And, you know, lastly, the thing that comes to mind is to inherit a large sum of money from an aunt in Brazil. But basically what we would encourage you to do is think about six months ahead. So whatever your situation is, start considering your plans right now. And if you feel that you're going to be financially strapped after the renewal or the renewal might not happen because the bank might not approve you, this is the time for you to act. So get in touch with us. Let's have a phone conversation. Let's see where you're at and we will help you make that decision. Now, let's go back to the topic that I opened up with in the beginning of the video that the Canadian economy is being dangerously concentrated 
around the housing market. What's going on with that? All right, we're back at betterdwelling.com. And this time around, I'm looking at an article titled Canadian GDP supported by government spending still performing like a recession. StatCan is showing that residential investment actually gained in the third quarter of 23, despite slow real estate sales. And to my ears, it sounds like progress. It sounds like people are active. Consumers are going out and buying real property. Investors are transacting and that whole sector of the market is growing. But residential investment is a direct contribution housing makes to GDP. And it should be growing at roughly the same pace as GDP. What we're seeing though, is that it's outpacing it despite the economic woes. If residential investment becomes too large a part of the GDP, it becomes dangerous. Consider this, experts considered the US being one of the most toxic examples of this disbalance back in 2006, when the housing market grew to 7% of the GDP and was followed by a 3% correction in the next two years, sending world markets into a nosedive. The weight of that single GDP component becomes disproportionately large, and even a slight shakeup of the real estate tree might bring the entire GDP growth crashing down. In the third quarter of 23, Canadian residential investment rose to 7.8% of the GDP, and the Canadian GDP dependence on housing at this point is about 10% higher than the US bubble in 2006. This is exacerbated by incentivizing population growth through immigration. And the consequence of all of this is that OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, placed Canada dead last at number 40 for the GDP per capita growth in its projections that stretch up to 2030. But the problem is a lot more tangible when you look at it from the perspective of a younger generation. People that are just about to enter the workforce or will be entering the workforce in the next five to seven years. They will have a lot fewer opportunities than their peers in other countries on that list. Places like Lithuania, New Zealand, Portugal, Italy, Greece. Did I mention that Canada came in at number 40, dead last? With all that said, I don't have a specific remedy for how to fix the situation. I'm just sharing the facts with you. And it appears to me that the younger generation is going to be a lot poorer in Canada than their parents. In conclusion, I want to leave you guys with something positive. So here's a great quote from Yogi Berra. A nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. Please like the video, subscribe and comment and happy new year.